Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous, and I am back today with another episode of r slash we won't call you what not to say. I'm a recruiter for a company that hires for a low level position almost all of the time. I like it because I get to make people's day with my phone call. As expected, they are entry level positions, so frankly, the only thing you need to do to at least get a face to face interview is feign enthusiasm. I have been working extra hours over the last week, working to staff up one of our severely understaffed locations, so I'm not super familiar with the location I'm looking for. I come across a resume that has a custom cover letter, she is excited to have a job with us, and professes that she will be the best employee we have ever hired. We have a quick conversation and she seems like a good candidate, I send everything out, go about my day. I get an email late at night from the same girl demanding I remove all of her resume and cover letters from my system and to not contact her again. Strange, but frankly I'm not paid enough to care, so I wish her well and send it off to my HR manager for a conversation today. Turns out, she has applied for the job already in the past, hasn't shown up a couple times, always with a different excuse. The office manager of the location I am booking for cancelled the interview with her, citing the missed interviews. Most people would either accept this or would ask for another chance, right? Her response, instead, was to email the manager and told him to GET BENT and to F YOURSELF. This, of course, was prefaced with I don't usually swear, and ended with, you are an idiot. Weird thing is, she's been in customer service for a long time. I think we probably dodged a bullet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't usually cuss. <laughs> but I'm gonna cuss you out. Um potential employer uh, this person who's gonna be dealing with <laughs> my future oh man that's just weird some people in the comments had said that maybe it was due to the fact that maybe she was like on unemployment because when you're on unemployment you have to prove that you basically tried like actually tried so applying and trying to go to stuff and everything for work to keep getting your benefits so some people suggested maybe that had been what she was doing previously i don't know but like <laughs> oh that's that's bad uh that's the best example you could give i work for a big medical devices company my department designs tools for neurosurgery we're big and corporate we had a candidate interview this morning. He bombed his phone interview last week by missing the call and then giving an uninspiring interview. The senior manager opted to bring him in because he is a referral of an employee who's been here almost 20 years. He showed up wearing jeans and an unbuttoned flannel with a graphic t-shirt underneath. I too was wearing flannel but buttoned with slacks and I'm not interviewing for a Fortune 500 company. Since education is important to HR, I was discussing the fact that he only had one year of his bachelor's in engineering. Yeah, well, I started there and I just didn't vibe with the program. It wasn't a good fit. What didn't you like about it? Well, I was in school for engineering and they had us take a bunch of filler classes that were a waste of time about things that don't matter. Like, I had to take this holocaust class. I gave him a chance to clarify. Nope, he didn't realize that saying the holocaust didn't matter wasn't proper etiquette at a big corporate company. So yeah, we won't call you. Mm, no, that's so bad. That's like picking one of the biggest, most important events of human history to remember and learn from and care about and saying, this is a perfect example of things that simply do not matter, so I left. Oh my god. Thanks for your honesty. Goodbye. I conduct about 70 plus interviews each year for people to work seasonally with a summer program for high-risk kids. 
It's really low skill work, we do all the training, etc, and all that is really required is a good attitude and a clean background. I had one applicant I interviewed who appeared to fit these qualifications and came recommended by her sister, who already was a solid employee. When I spoke with her sister, she warned me that the applicant was a little socially awkward and their family was really hoping that she could get a job that was a good fit. Although I was a little curious what she meant by that, I wasn't too worried. I've hired people with a wide variety of social skills, and while some of them have required a little more patience from me, I'm happy to make that investment in an employee with the right attitude and work ethic. So the day of the interview comes, and things go fine initially. I definitely can pick up on what the sister meant about the applicant missing some social cues, but again, not necessarily a red flag until I get to one of my standard questions. Tell me about a time you made a mistake. What happened and how did you handle it? I'm looking for answers that demonstrate critical thinking, honesty, ability to take responsibility, ability to ask for help, things like that. This young woman's answer may have included some honesty, but what she chose to share was the absolute worst answer she could have chosen. Her answer was, I'm in my early 20s, but I don't really think of myself as that age, so I mostly like to talk to people that are younger than me. Huh. Odd. So I made a mistake in the past by having messaging conversations with younger people about things that were inappropriate for their age and their parents saw the messages and got mad, so I had to apologize and couldn't talk to them anymore. I understand that I'm older, but I really just think of myself as a teenager. I quickly wrap things up. You've just told me, as you are interviewing for a job working with children, that you have gotten in trouble for inappropriate behavior with children. It sucks that I wasted my time, but at least it was an easy decision. Oh, oh my gosh. Um... So at first I thought maybe the person, and, and it, it could still be, uh, when they were saying maybe they miss social cues, they're kind of a little bit awkward, kind of hoping for a good fit kind of job, maybe having to rely on that referral, maybe this person could possibly have something like Asperger's or autism, which are the same thing, but, you know. And um, so I was thinking, well, that's, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily fair to punish people for their lack of social cues and like social beha socially uh, appropriate behavior when that's like part of it's just part of who they are and they have deficits there. Um, but yeah, no, you probably yeah you you picked the worst example and I'm a little concerned why <laughs> by what that means. Like hopefully this person wasn't like engaging in the appropriate behavior with the people. <laughs> that make that makes sense. Oh oh no. Tales from Wall Street. This is a big long one, which I apologize for, but I don't want to cut anything out of it since it's a crazy story. I've worked as an executive assistant at one of the investment banks on Wall Street in New York City for over 12 years. During my first year here, the second assistant on our team moved away and we needed a replacement. We needed an assistant who was mature, had experience, a great work ethic, etc. He or she would be supporting two senior bankers on our team, plus a number of junior bankers. Our bosses wanted me to handle the pre-interviews of the candidates, give them the rundown of what the job entails. If that went well, they'd meet the other senior bankers they'd be supporting, and lastly, they'd meet my boss, who was our group head. So, a recruiter we were working with made arrangements for me to meet a woman with about 13 years experience, has worked around Wall Street in the past, and looks great on paper. She's all set to meet us at 12pm on the day of her appointment. 12pm on the day in question comes and goes. No candidate. 12.15pm? Nothing. I call the recruiter to reconfirm that she's got the right day and time. She does. 12.30 p.m. Nothing. About 12.40ish or so, I need to head to the ladies' room. I call our receptionist and said, Hey, has security called to say they're sending this woman up? She said, Nope, nothing from them yet. I said, Okay, I need to use the ladies, so if she shows up, I'll be right back. The path from my desk to the ladies' room takes you right past the receptionist's desk. 
I pass by as I head to the ladies, glance over at reception, nothing. I go to the bathroom, wash my hands, and head back out. I'm gone about three minutes tops. As I pass on my way back to my desk, I see a woman in the classic Black Ann Taylor job interview suit signing in at reception. I continue to my desk to grab copies of her resume and the receptionist calls me to let me know she's here. I go over to reception to greet her and usher her into the conference room. By this time, it's 12.45 p.m. I wouldn't expect to even be considered for a job where I'd shown up 45 minutes late, but I figured as an assistant, it's not my place to give her the big nope until my bosses tell me. I figure I'll give her a super brief rundown of the position and then let my bosses know that she finally decided to grace us with her presence. As I usher her into the conference room, I notice something. In her hand, she's holding a fast food bag from Wendy's and a gigantic jumbo soda that she's still working on. At this point, she's not getting hired, but I have to cordially ease into that. I politely say to her, so did you have any trouble finding the place? Because it's lower Manhattan where all the streets zigzag and cross over and you can truly get lost if you're not familiar with the neighborhood. She brightly says, Nope, I've worked down around here years ago, so I knew where your offices are. I knew you were right near Ground Zero. I said, oh, well, I ask because you were scheduled to see us at noon. She effing flat out says to me, yeah, but I was hungry, so I stopped to get something to eat. You know how it is when you gotta get your Wendy's on? Just pleasant and breezy like it wasn't a job interview, like she wasn't 45 minutes late and she didn't have the brains to toss the fast food bag and drink before she came in. We sat down and I just very neutrally and briefly gave her a rundown of the job, not even the way I gave it to the people we actually considered. I spent no more than five minutes with her and that was only because I didn't really know what to do. She's sitting there smiling, not a care in the world, like she's sure she'll be a shoe in At the end of that, I politely excused myself and went in to get the first of our bosses, one of the ones that she'd be directly reporting to. I told him and my boss exactly what happened. Now, the guy she would have been supporting, Boss A, had a super nasty temper, and he blew up. What the F are we even seeing her for? I said, I agree, but it's really not my place to tell her to get the heck out. I didn't figure we were hiring her after that, but I need a little help here. My boss, Boss B, looks at him and says, just get rid of her. So he heads into the conference room to meet her. Five minutes later, and it's a done deal. He comes back in and says to me, okay, I'm done. Go ahead and escort her to the elevators. I go back in there. And the smile was gone from her face. She looked like she'd seen a ghost, and I can only imagine what my boss with his infamous temper must have said to someone who, by all means, deserved to get chewed out. I walk in, and before I can speak, she goes, uh, I, I wasn't late, I was here on time, but I was sitting there the whole time and your receptionist never signed me in. I sat there the whole time in your reception area, waiting for her to call you. When she said that, I began to lose my temper. I said, well, here's the thing. You admitted that you were late because you stopped off to get fast food, which you brought in with you. A few minutes before you did show up, I had gone past reception and you were absolutely not there. When I passed by again, there you were just signing in. I saw you. So don't you dare show up here 45 minutes late like it's no big deal and then blame it on our receptionist when you get called out on it. She starts begging for another chance, at which time I opened the conference room door and said, thank you for your time, let me show you to the elevators. I walked her out, pressed the button, and watched her get on. She started to beg again just before she finally got on and left. Oh, and once back at my desk, I called the recruiter and told her everything. So I'm not sure where this woman eventually got a job, but needless to say, it wasn't with us. Just so much, yikes. How do you... 
if you're no even if you're gonna cut it close like if you're gonna even remotely if you don't have an hour <laughs> for food don't stop for food like unless if you're you're like gonna die because i know like some diabetic people and such they're gonna need something but that's when like you bring a snack with you and you eat it and like in your car as you're going and then and then you get you get there on time and you oh my god in New York City, like, I, I don't know, I've never been there, but I imagine people are very super professional and very maybe a little snobby. <laughs> I could not, I would, I could not imagine bringing Wendy's in, I, mm -mm, no, and then to blame the receptionist, are you freaking kidding me? Wow. A real resume for a veterinary position? When they say good help is hard to find, they aren't lying. Work experience. Burger King crew member, Vero Beach, Florida, February 2016 to February 2018. I work for Burger King three weeks, March 3, 2017 to March 20, 2017. I worked for Dollar Tree November 7th, 2016 to December 16th, 2016. I also worked as the Easter Bunny that was a two, almost three week job. That job was finished from the seven or ten till Easter came around and ended. Cashier, sales associate, Dollar Tree, Vero Beach, Florida. Oh no, bro, someone's gotta work with you on this. Like really, you that's not good. Just, oh man. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully, you'll learn some things not to do when attempting to get a job. And also, if your resume looks like the last one we viewed, ask someone for help with that. Because that's not probably, that's not gonna get you a job. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, listening, or whatnot. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and drop a like and let me know your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Really quickly, I would like to thank my patrons. Up on the screen, you should see my face palmers and my crazy k's thank you all so much for supporting me in that way if you're interested in becoming a patron checking out the original post that we talked about in this video or possibly sending me an email for possible inclusion in a future video all of that information is in the description box so be sure to check that out i'll talk to you in my next video bye